My name is Jakub Kudersky. I often go by Kuba, which is short for Jakub, same thing as Robert Bob. Uh, I'm a grad student at the University of Waterloo in Canada. And this summer, I started working on improving dominators in LLVM. This was part of my intern project at Google. Uh, this talk uh, will give you some information about some theory behind dominators, how dominators are implemented in LLVM, how they are used in LLVM, what's changed in the past couple of months, and uh, what remaining problems we have with dominators, and what is the way forward with that. Uh, so let's start with some definitions. First, we have control flow graph. And if you think about the function, function has some basic blocks. Those basic blocks correspond to nodes in the CFG, and uh, jumps at the end of basic blocks form directed edges in the CFG. And now, dominance is a relationship in the CFG, such that node X dominates nodes, uh, node Y if all of the paths from entry to Y go through X. Uh, so for an example, uh, entry dominates itself as every reachable node dominates itself. Then entry also dominates all of the other nodes. Uh, so say here, entry dominates A. Next, we have this diamond situation when there's the node C, and C can go, go to either D or E, and at the end it goes also to F. So because starting at C, we can make a decision and go through, through, uh, to either D or E, uh, neither of them dominates F. And when it comes to the node uh, B, we can go, uh, go to it straight from A, or take the right path and end up uh, in B at the end, and because of that, A also dominates B. Now, when we think about the closest dominator uh, in, the, in the CFG walk, we call it an immediate dominator. And every node except the entry uh, has its own unique immediate dominator. And immediate dominators form a parent-child relationship uh, meaning if you have a node and it has an immediate dominator, then the immediate dominator is its parent in the dominator tree. And dominator tree creates this nice, very compact representation, uh, which allows you to very quickly get your immediate dominator, which is just your parent. And then you also uh, have this property that every node dominates all of its descendants in the tree. Like, it dominates every node that is in its subtree. So here, Say uh, we have the node C, and C dominates uh, D, E, F, and all of them are its descendants, and it also dominates itself. Now, formally, uh, dominator tree is defined to be any tree that has the parent and the sibling properties. And the parent property means that if you have two nodes, and one of them is a parent in the tree, other one is the child in the tree of this parent, then if we make the parent unreachable, if we delete it from the CFG, then it must mean that the child also becomes unreachable. And when we have, uh, when we consider the sibling property, it means then when we have two siblings that share the same parent, removing one of them cannot make the other one unreachable. And now, when it comes to post-dominators, like this seems to be very easy. Uh, to compute post-dominator tree, all we have to do is we have to reverse edges in the CFG. So uh, the exit becomes the new entry, and all of the edges go the other way. So from exit, we would go to G, from G, we would go to B, and so on and so forth. But the whole thing gets complicated because in LVM, a function can have multiple exits. So in this example, the exits of the function are D, G, and H, and because of that, we have to uh, find some way to deal with that. And the way we deal with that is that we introduce a new a node in the CFG that we call virtual exit. And what it does, it collects all of the exits and form a virtual common exit, all of the exit nodes. And uh, because of that, it's a virtual node in the CFG, but it's an actual node in the dominator tree. And every post-dominator tree has, its, uh, has a virtual root. So it, it models a virtual exit, even though the function may have just one exit. 
uh, it is like so to make it more consistent. Now, when you decide to print the dominator tree on OVM, you get this a little bit scary at first representation, like there are a lot of numbers and uh, weird ca characters. Uh, but the thing is that on the left, the first number is the calculated level in the tree. This is the level that is calculated while printing. And on the far right, you have the level depth in the tree that was stored in the uh, tree node itself. And when you take a look at this example, you have that uh, DFS numbers are invalid. So this sounds scary, like my tree may be invalid. No, uh, DFS numbers are calculated lazily. Uh, meaning they are only calculated if you use a dominator tree enough times to make it worth it. And what uh, dominator tree allow, allow us to do is to, query, to make dominance queries and answer them in constant time. Uh, dominators are very important uh, in SSA because in SSA we have that every dev must dominate it, its users, at least in a valid piece of IR. And uh, dominators, uh, and especially dominance frontier, it use, is used to compute optimal placements of phi nodes in SSA. Uh, so the two main classes that uh, let you access the dominator tree in LVM is the dominator tree and post dominator tree. Those ones work with basic blocks. Then you have analysis passes, uh, the dominator tree and post dominator tree wrapper pass. And uh, dominators are also used with machine basic blocks and with Clang CFG. So here's a, a small game. Like, take a guess how many times each phrase appears in the whole LVM code base. So this is run recursively on LVM, Clang, and Poly at the same time. Okay. Uh, first one, dominator. 1500. 1500, okay. Dominance? 200. Uh, dominates? 3000. 3000. And uh, DT dot or DT arrow, so access to the dominator tree? 5000, okay. So a little bit less, but it's still it's it's used uh, very widely in Valium. Like it, it's a very useful and commonly used tool. Uh, now, before we started, we identified a couple of problems with dominators. First thing is that when you have a dominator tree and you make some transformation, it's very hard. It was very hard to update the dominator tree because first you had to figure out what your transformation actually did and how it affected the dominator tree. Like you had to manually manipulate nodes and glue them together to some other nodes to make a transformation also on the dominator tree. And this turns out to be very difficult for humans to reason about. And it's, it's extremely error prone. And what's more like the errors can propagate uh, a lot and like ex expose some weird behavior in, in some consequent uh, passes or transformations. Like, it, it's very surprising at times. And because uh, updating dominators used to be uh, very tricky, people just tended to not preserve them or just to recalculate them everywhere. And I did this experiment where I tried to optimize like a full, uh, full LTO clunk bitcode and turned out that dominator tree was recalculated a million times which consumed 3% of the total optimization time. So it, it seems like a lot. And the, the bigger problem was with post-dominator tree because uh, it's not really possible to figure out how to update it manually. And this creates this chicken and, pro and egg problem because post-dominator tree was very hard to update manually. So no one updated it, no one preserved that. So it was costly to maintain, so no one used that. Uh, so, uh, we had to make the updating the dominator tree easier and to have an automatic way to do that. And, uh, like, the two selling points are making fewer calculations and spending less compile time, uh, just preserving uh, dominators, and also getting rid of the, all of the bugs that happen in the code that is scattered across all of the LVM that tries to update dominators uh, manually. And we also wanted, wanted to make the post tree more viable to use 
by, by making it possible to update it uh, automatically and not to trigger so many calculations. Uh, so the way we decided to take was to implement an incremental algorithm for updating dormitory trees. And the most promising one was the, uh, the depth-based search. So this is an algorithm by uh, Lucas Georgidas, published in, I think, April 2016, so it's quite novel. And it's pretty complicated. What it tries to do, it tries to identify some properties of dominators and use that dev information and those properties to bound the search so that it only has to update some subtrees of the tree, not the whole tree, when you say that you, you, you added or removed an edge in the CFG. And so what we did, we, we cleaned up the existing implementation of the dominator tree. We switched from uh, existing simple Langauer Tarjan algorithm for computing uh, dominators to semi-NCA. And semi-NCA is used by Devers Search under the hood as the construction algorithm. And uh, we also implemented the Devers Search. And along the way, we made some improvements uh, to the post-dominator tree. So the, the semi-NCA uh, construction algorithm is actually simpler than uh, simple Langauer Tarjan. Like the, the simple in the Langauer Tarjan doesn't mean that it's simple. It's just a simpler version of some more complicated algorithm. Uh, so, so the main difference is that it doesn't perform the uh, path compression. And because of that, uh, its runtime uh, complexity is quadratic instead of n log n. So in practice, it happens that it turns out to be faster. And we, we did some experiments trying to, uh, uh, trying to see which one happens to be faster in LVM. And turns out that semi-NCA, uh, on average, is up to 20% faster than using uh, the previous uh, simple Lego Tarjan. And this change landed in uh, LLVM 5.0. And additional property that is nice is that uh, semi-NCA naturally stores the depth, the level in the tree, in the tree nodes, which makes it easier to and faster to compute nearest common dominators, which is also used in the uh, in the iterated dominance frontier algorithm. So the two new pieces of API that we exposed at first is insert edge and delete edge. And uh, here's a small remark. Like, when you read papers about algorithms, an incremental algorithm is an algorithm that makes you uh, update some data structure, but it only makes it possible for insertions. And decremental algorithm is an algorithm that makes you handle deletions. And when you have an algorithm that is both incremental and decremental, this is a dynamic algorithm. Uh, but, like, Colloquially, incremental means dynamic here, and I'll use incremental in the future, in the, in the future slides. So uh, we use, I, I use that pieces of API to uh, battle test the, the incremental updater, and I updated some of the, the passes, and it seemed to work pretty well. Like, it was fast, I was able to bootstrap LVM, I was able to bootstrap Clang, uh, I was able to, to compile all of the test suite, uh, but it was incorrect. Still. Uh, so what happens is that uh, there are some cases when you can make uh, some transformation and then try to update the dominator tree, and the database search algorithm gets confused. So here's a short example. Uh, this example uh, was sent to me uh, as, a, as a bug report for one of the patches for uh, aggressive dead code elimination by uh, Daniel Saunders of Apple. And this is, this is the, the smallest example that I have. Like other ones require some weird uh, irreducible control flow. So here uh, we, have some, we have some CFG and we run ADCE on it. And ADCE decides that all of the cases in the switch are, are dead. So it tries to remove all of the body of the, of the switch. Like it tries to delete default two, four, and five. So it starts by saying that let's make two the only successor of switch and it deletes all of the other edges uh, that are outgoing out of switch. 
Okay, now it says, don't monitor tree, please delete, please delete the edge from switch to default. And don't monitor tree is like, okay, it seems like delete is no, no longer reachable, so let's remove the whole uh, default subtree. And by the way, uh, default was connected to exit, and because of that, uh, the, because of the because of that and because that switch has a successor two and two has a successor exit let's connect exit to two so the, the update the first update is like that okay looks reasonable like all we have to do now is to just nuke the subtree four and subtree five and we are done okay let's let's delete the edge from switch to four so uh, dominator tree figures out that four the, the whole subtree starting at four becomes unreachable, so it tries to delete it, fine. But now it concludes that four had the successor exit, and the level in the tree of the exit is uh, one deeper, and because of that it figures him, exit must have been in the same subtree, so it also deletes that. And we end up in a situation when exit was, exit is reachable, it's forward reachable, but it disappears from the dominator tree. And then like that, the errors propagate forward. Like it's, it's a, bit, uh, a bit nasty. And with this example, we see that we have to, uh, I realized that we had to update the dominator tree and the CFG in sync, like uh, uh, in lockstep. So one update to the CFG, one update to the dominator tree. One update to the CFG, one update to the dominator tree. And because dominator tree and the entire incremental algorithm, it works on edge by edge basis. It has to, you have to figure out how to update VIR so that only one edge of the CFG gets, up the, uh, gets affected at a time. So we realized that we really need to have a batch algorithm that lets you uh, do some complex transformation on your IR, figure out what edges uh, were changed, and then update Dominator tree all at once at the list of updates. But we don't want to store the different versions of the same CFG as it, as it changes in the, the future. Like, it's a waste of memory and you have to do a lot of uh, tracking to, to, you know, to keep the copies. So we need to find a way, we need to find a way to how to div the CFG between two updates. And it happens that the list of the Dominator tree updates is, is the div of the CFG. Like, you are passing the, the things that changed, and this is the change. Like, it seems pretty obvious, but it's, it was not uh, obvious for me at first. So, the batch algorithm goes like that. Re try to reverse apply all of the updates to a CFG that happened in the future to get some snapshot of the CFG in the past. And let's take a look at an example. So, he here we have some current uh, CFG. This is after the transformation. And now we get some list of updates. And update says like, oh, insert, like th th there was an edge that was inserted from C to D. Edge ED was inserted. Edge EC was deleted and FG was inserted. And when we take a look at the CFG, the edges that are marked as inserted are already there. And the edges that are deleted, uh, they are not present in the current CFG. So to get the, the images in the, in the past, we have to kind of subtract the updates to get some snapshots of the CFG uh, from the past. And uh, now we can get to the, the, to the original CFG. And if you try to like, uh, make the update happen in your head, like you'll see that going from left to right, you, you get what you expect. And we can also make an observation that the, the order of the updates doesn't really matter. You end up, like, no matter what order you execute the updates, you end up with the same CFG. And because of that, we are free to reorder the updates internally to, to make it faster. And we are also free to remove the redundant updates that cancel each other out. So here's the new uh, batch update API, uh, some example. So here we want to make a, make a bypass to the body, uh, body two, body three, and insert uh, a new, uh, 
and start a new basic block that, that connects start to the exit. So all we have to do is we have to tell the uh, updater that we inserted an edge from start to A, from A to end, and we disconnected a body from the start. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, and again, I updated the, I updated the transformations uh, to use the batch update MPI, and this time uh, it seemed uh, like this time it actually works. So, so, so it's a great step forward. And there's also uh, another pass that is updated, jump threading. Uh, this is uh, by uh, Brian from Samsung. Uh, I think it landed uh, recently and was reverted, but I think it will make it uh, to the LVM in the very near future. And another piece of the project was to make some better way of verifying or of validating uh, dominator trees. Uh, and before, uh, the verify dominator tree function, all it did, it, it calculated uh, a new dominator tree and it tried it to see if the existing dominator tree was exactly the same as the new one. So this didn't really prove that the construction algorithm itself is correct. Because if you decide that, oh, like, let's make the construction algorithm uh, return you an empty dominator tree, then like, it, it's always going to verify, uh, verify fine if, you're, like, if you always have a, like, an empty tree. But it's, it's, it's pretty cheap. And the new validation, uh, it's able to verify both dominators and post dominators. And it's able to verify every single bit of information in the dominator tree, which is very neat. Uh, but the downside is that it, it's expensive. Uh, it's, it's cubic. So let's take a look. Uh, we have a few new checks that uh, all together give you the, the whole verify function. And if you recall the definition of the dominator tree or on one of the first slides, we had that dominator tree is uh, any tree that has the parent and the sibling properties. But this means that if you have a tree that has the parent and the sibling properties, it is some dominator tree. It may not be the dominator tree we want. So we have to verify that the dominator tree has, all, has those two properties and that it has all of the nodes we expect and all of the additional information that we decide to store there is also correct. And all of it together, it allows you to verify dominator tree and post dominator tree anywhere you have. And one of the newest checks is the, the verify DFS numbers. Uh, I think I added it one or two weeks ago and it was able to, to find a couple of bugs. And this, this shows that, oh, by the way, I also introduced those bugs. It, it, it shows, it, it shows that like, the, 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 like the, the errors can happen like very late in the pipeline. It's, and it's not obvious that it, it's because of the dominator trees. Like if you, if you take a look at the, at, the, at the titles of the bug reports, those are like not really obvious. And uh, yeah, and so I think that there's a lot of value in uh, verifying all of the information that is stored in the dominator tree and dominator tree nodes. Now, uh, we also uh, noticed that post dominators and infinite loops don't play well together. Because if you think about a CFG with an infinite loop, the infinite loop doesn't have any exit in that. So like if you get stuck in, in an infinite loop, you cannot exit. And because of that, we are not, going, we are not adding it to the dominator tree. And you, you could end up with completely empty uh, dominator trees in some cases. If you had a contrail flow that always ended up in an infinite loop and had no exit. And th this, th this is not, like th this is okay, this is fine with the textbook definition, but in practice, uh, like it, it's better to reason about infinite loops because you can make some optimizations based on this uh, information. And the way it normally works is that post dominator tree during construction, it searches for the exits in the CFG. So it starts by discovering, uh, discovering the basic block that has an exit. And then it only adds those nodes. So now we have to find a way to introduce kind of an artificial exit somewhere in the infinite loop to include all of the remaining uh, reverse unreachable uh, CFG nodes. 
So the way we do it is that first we find some normal exits, we construct the dominator, uh, we, we, we add like the, the path to the, uh, to the dominator tree, and then we pick all of the remaining, uh, we pick one of the remaining uh, nodes that was not visited. And now we try to get as far away as possible, taking reverse branches, we want to now take a, like go as far away as possible taking forward edges, and this gives us some path that is longest and was not visited before. And now we say that G is the new root, is the new exit, even though it doesn't really exit anywhere. And we include those nodes in the postdominator tree. And we do the same starting from the F, which was not visited before. And now we can make an observation that actually if we start F at F, which is one of the uh, roots, we can go to G. So G was a redundant root and we can get rid of that. And we end up uh, with a postdominator tree that has uh, all of the nodes in it. Uh, yeah, and it uh, turns out that if you make this change, uh, there is, like, pretty much everything keeps working. Like, th there were not, of, uh, not many tests that we had to update uh, to, to, to make it know about the infinite loops, and you can make some more optimizations. And the way other compilers do with that is they sometimes add an actual CFG node that uh, creates an exit out of the infinite loop in the front end, not, in, not, 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 not like we do it, like, in memory. Like, like during the dominator tree construction. Uh, okay, now, now taking, like comparing the current situation with the situation uh, before switching to uh, semi NCA. I, I run some experiments and it turns out that we re uh, recalculate more for some reason, but we also perform uh, a lot of updates, which is good, and updates seem to be really faster than full calculations, which doesn't, isn't really surprising because by its nature, like updates only affect some subtrees in the dominator tree. They don't rebuild the whole trees usually. And so, so we end up t taking a lot more time, uh, like three minutes more, uh, optimizing uh, full LTO uh, Clank bit code in O3, but like the percent of time we spent uh, Calculating dominators, it decreased, so, so which is good. And post dominators now visit a lot of more uh, CFG nodes, and I think this is because of the, the infinite loop checks, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but post dominators got, got faster in doing their work. Uh, so those numbers, like, they don't tell us really much. Like, I wouldn't put uh, too much emphasis on those numbers because there were a lot of things that may have changed in the middle and are unrelated. And another observation is that even though you, you can make a lot of incremental update, it doesn't mean that you actually like saved some time. Like you definitely added some time, but you only... Uh, starting from where we left. Uh, one thing is that the infinite loops that we now include in that post are statically infinite loops, which might have been not clear before. And this is useful when we co consider something like embedded systems that can run in a loop without any exit, and they can just wait for some operating systems to kill them or for just someone to unplug the, the power cord. So, so it's, it's not that like infinite loop are infinite loops are in the undefined behavior and we have to fear them. Like, infinite loops are fine. Uh, taking a look at the numbers, uh, the, there were a lot of things that changed in between. So, so I, I wouldn't put too much emphasis uh, on them uh, because like, I, I haven't analyzed them uh, that much to, to draw some conclusions. And... Uh, if we just add some dominator tree updates, it doesn't mean that our code will magically get faster. This is just some additional work. Like adding updates, it's more work, not less work. But if we can trade recalculations 
for updates, that would be uh, like almost always a win. And, uh, but if we are going to change some recalculations to, to updates and then recalculate the tree anyway, like we are not, uh, we are not. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, some summary. Uh, if you if you have some piece of code that previously did some uh, the monitor tree updates manually, like please update it and use the uh, the new uh, incremental uh, API, like the insert that, delete that, or even better, the apply updates. Uh, this is guaranteed to be always correct, and it works for both dominators and post-dominators. And you can apply the same updates for dominators and post-dominators. Like, it, it, does the, it does all of the work like automatically, like behind the scenes. You don't have to pass some separate updates on reverse edges. And May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention? All right. So when you are sometimes not sure uh, if if you may be in, uh, like you if you may be invalidating the dominator tree or like making it incorrect in some way, or you may be suspect that your I'm traveling really hard, but <laughs> this doesn't help. <laughs> uh, so you can you can just assert that the dominator tree verifies uh, verifies okay, and th this will be slow. Like don't put it in like uh, in your normal like production code, but like put it under assert when you are working on your pass, and then remove it. Uh, but there are still some remaining problems uh, with the incremental updates. Like the first thing is that it, it's, it may be verbose and it's not that easy to use. The thing is that when you are working on IR, you are making some IR level operations. Like you can say something like replace all users with, and this can affect multiple edges in the CFG at the time. Like the current API is IR level, not CFG level. And because of that, you still have to do a lot of work to figure out how exactly your CFG changed uh, when you are doing some transformation. And it would be nice to either teach the dominator tree to work to, to, to support some IR level operations or to teach VIR to make some uh, CFG level operations, like to teach VIR to remove and add edges. Uh, and uh, performing incremental updates, as I said before, like it's not always a win. Uh, we, we have to f figure out how to make the updates, how to batch updates in such a way that we don't like update the tree and then throw the results away because like something will recalculate it. Like say you have a path, you have your pass, it tries very hard to preserve dominators. But at the end, uh, you are done and the dominator tree is preserved. And next you, next you run something like simplify CFG, which destroys everything and you end up recalculating it anyway. So, so like there's no point preserving dominators for someone who will uh, invalidate it. And in our future work, uh, uh, it would be good to teach some remaining passes to use the incremental API and to have a way to be even more lazy and batch more. So to have some, some, high, some, some way to defer batch updates so that you will enqueue updates and at some point, you either realize that you have to recalculate them anyway, so you can just do a recalculation, or like the number of updates is uh, small enough that it's profitable to run the, the batch update instead. Uh, so that will be something uh, very nice to have in LVM. And uh, one difficulty is that all of the code uh, lives in a header file, 
uh, which is heavily templated, so it's not that easy to prepare your profile and optimize the, the batch updater. But uh, so far, like, there, there is, doesn't seem to be some like, really huge bottlenecks. Like, the court seems to uh, work quite, quite fast. Uh, but it's also a thing to focus on. Uh, okay, thank you.